We are so honored to have His Excellency, Mr. Tijani Mohammed Vande, the President of the 74th Session of the United Nations General Assembly, addressing our uh, the Fifth International Day of Women and Girls in Science. Please welcome His Excellency. Your Royal Highness, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, and particularly young scientists who happen to be girls and women, distinguished delegates, I'm delighted to be here with you to celebrate women and girls in science. It's only right that women and girls have full and equal access to and participation in science, technology, and innovation. This is also necessary if our societies are to prosper. The fact is that we need more women and girls in science, in the classrooms, in the laboratories, and at the leadership levels. Five years ago, member states broke new ground when they adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. This was a great achievement of multilateralism. Within the framework for development, gender equality is both a cross-cutting and a stand-alone goal. We know that we are lagging behind in the implementation of this common policy. I'm encouraged by the intensified implementation efforts upon entering the record of action and delivery. However, we must do more. If we are to be successful in the implementation of Agenda 2030, we must make sure girls have access to quality education and have all the social support they need to enable them to pursue their dreams. This involves respect for women and their human rights and empowerment. Gender equality means equality of opportunity. Your Highness, Excellencies, distinguished delegates, we must harness the skills of everyone, everywhere. None of us benefits from excluding the resources, capabilities, and competencies of women. We cannot afford to leave half of our population behind. Every field of work and study benefits from diversity. Different points of view create an, an innovative environment which is conducive to problem solving. This is essential for scientific discovery. Today, only 35% of students in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics or STEM are women. It is therefore most surprising, it is therefore not surprising that only 30% of researchers in sciences are women. Let us together work to rectify this imbalance and ensure that the best and the brightest take their rightful place in science regardless of their gender. This begins with education. We need to take all steps to ensure the universal education of girls for a minimum of 12 years. We must integrate ICT into education and invest in digital empowerment programs to eliminate the digital divide between boys and girls, as well as between the rich and the poor. Curricula should promote human rights and gender equality and address injustices. In a recent survey, 100 member states reported initiatives to eliminate bias and make curricula gender responsive. Of these states, 99 took further steps to increase the number of women and girls in science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. I encourage all member states to emulate these initiatives. There is, however, much to do. Initiatives to combat gender stereotypes and job segregation are essential to ensuring gender parity in science, business, and in employment. I call on all governments, the private sector, and academia to step up efforts to ensure that women and girls have the same opportunities as their male counterparts empowering them to reach their full potential in STEM. To the girls in science here today and around the world, I say, you are the future Nobel laureates. You will take your due place in finding innovative solutions which will help us implement the SDGs. You will be our role models. The United Nations and many organizations, bodies and individuals are with you. We cannot create a better world without you. I thank you.
We thank His Excellency, Mr. Tijani Mohammed Bande, for his remarks and for, his, uh, for addressing our assembly 